In the last seven years, I've been very interested in studying spontaneous remissions from diseases. In other words, conditions where people had been diagnosed with cancer or diabetes or rare genetic disorders that medical science had no solution for. I studied people who had cardiovascular conditions like tachycardia or arrhythmia or high blood pressure, people who had high cholesterol levels, emphysema, endocrine problems like thyroid values changed. And I was interested in finding out if there were some things that were common amongst these people. And I found that there were f actually four things that were common amongst every person that had a spontaneous remission. The first thing that was in common was that every person accepted and believed that there was a divine intelligence running their body. Some people may call it a spiritual intelligence. Some people may say it's a greater mind or a deeper mind. But they all accepted that there was an intelligence that was much greater than them. Now, if we call it this mystical intelligence, a spiritual intelligence, there's really nothing mystical about it at all. You see, it's the same intelligence right now that's keeping your heart beating. Your heart beats two gallons of blood every minute, over 100 gallons of blood every hour. It beats 100,000 times in one day, 40 million times a year, and over 3 billion times in one lifetime. It pumps consistently without you consciously thinking about it. Now, if we think about it, there's some order, there's some intelligence that's giving us life, that's keeping our heart beating. It's the same intelligence that's digesting our food, breaking down food into gases and, and nutrients and taking that food and organizing it to repair the body. All of that's taking place without us consciously thinking about it. And these people began to realize that there was an intelligence running their body that was actually greater than them, that actually knew more than them. And if they could connect with this intelligence, maybe it would do the healing for them. You see, every single second, we lose 10 million cells. And the next second, we make another 10 million cells. Now, we don't think about doing that. You and I are free-willed individuals. But there's an order, there's an intelligence that's doing it for us. And in every single cell in the body, out of the 100 trillion cells that make up our physical body, every cell goes through 100,000 chemical reactions every single second. Now, if we multiply that by the 100 trillion cells, we can see that there's some intelligence that's giving us life consistently. Now, the interesting thing about this intelligence is that it has a will independent of our will. It consistently and constantly gives us life. Its will transcends our will. Its mind transcends our mind. And it, it keeps an order in the physical body. An example of that would be like, little enzymes running through the DNA of our, of our cells. There's 3.2 billion nucleic acids that make up the genes in one cell. Now this intelligence sends proteins up and down those nucleic acids and changes mutations so that we don't fall apart. Now if we think about this, this intelligence is giving us life consistently. And these people said, I'm riding on the back of a giant and if I could just learn to tap into this intelligence, it will do the healing for me. That's the first thing that they all accepted. Now the second thing they all believed in was that they understood that their thoughts, the way they thought over a period of time or their thinking actually contributed to their disease. And they said, if my thinking's contributed to my disease, maybe I should change the way I've been thinking over the last several years. Now every time we have a thought, we make a chemical. If we have good thoughts, or we have elevated thoughts, or happy thoughts, we make chemicals that make us feel good or happy. And if we have negative thoughts, or bad thoughts, or insecure thoughts, we make chemicals that make us feel exactly the way we're thinking. So as every chemical is released in the brain, it's literally a message that feeds the physical body. Now the body begins to feel the way it's thinking. Now, once we begin to feel the way we're thinking, an amazing thing happens. The brain, which is in constant communication with the body, checks in with the body, and it starts to think the way we're feeling, which then makes more chemicals to allow us to feel the way we're thinking and think the way we're feeling, and we get caught in this loop between the brain and the body of thinking and feeling. The ultimate side effect of this is that we create a state of being. 
and that state of being becomes the way in which we think. In other words, feeling becomes the way in which we think. And when feeling becomes the way in which we think, now we're caught in a loop where our body is literally thinking for us. Now these people reason, they said, if my thinking's created this condition, and my thoughts create these chemicals that make me feel a certain way and behave a certain way, I'll have to change the way I think. And so they set out to begin to interrupt this process. That was the second thing that they had in common. The third thing that they had in common, which I found really astounding, is that these people decided that in order to break their thinking process, they had to reinvent themselves. They had to become somebody else. And when they began to think about who they wanted to become, they stopped this feedback loop between thinking and feeling, and they started to ask themselves some important questions. Questions like this. What would it be like to be a happy person? Who do I know in my life that's happy? What would I have to change about myself in order to be a different person? Who in antiquity do I admire that's been great, that I've studied, that I can use some of the virtues and skills to begin to formulate a new ideal of myself? And these people began to contemplate what-ifs, possibilities, potentials of who they could become. And as they did this, the brain began to change. They began to think differently. And the thinking process began to format connections in their brain that started to act as a platform for them to be. So they began to gather information. They began to examine other options, different than the way they've been being for the last several years of their life. Now, the last thing that they had in common, which was the fourth thing, was that when these people reinvented themselves, they spent long moments where they lost track of time and space. In other words, they became so involved with what they were thinking about, so immersed in who they were becoming, that when they opened their eyes or when they turned on the light in the room or when they lifted their blindfolds up, it seemed like five minutes to them, but actually an hour and a half or two hours went by. And they were literally becoming so immersed in what they were thinking about that they lost track of time and space. They lost track of the feedback that takes place between the body and the brain. They lost track of the feedback that the brain always perceives in its environment. And they lost track of time. Now, the brain processes about 400 billion bits of information every single second. But we're only conscious of about 2,000 of those 400 billion bits. Now, those 2,000 bits of information of what, in, in reference to where our awareness exists only has to do with three things. It has to do with our feedback from the body, feedback from the environment, and our feedback in reference to time. You know, does your back hurt? Are you hungry? Do you have a headache? Are you thirsty? Are you tired? Is it too cold? Is it too warm? Do you like the way it smells in the, in the environment? How long is it going to take before the next experience happens? Our brain and our awareness is immersed in those particular things. And when our brain is immersed in those particular things, even though the brain is processing 400 billion bits of information, we keep our awareness on only 2,000 of those 400 billion bits and it has to do with the body, the environment, and time. These people who had spontaneous remissions, they move their awareness from those particular things to those other bits of information. And when they did that, we're beginning to learn from a scientific standpoint is that's the moment that the brain begins to pattern new circuits and new connections. So this began an interesting study for me because I wanted to know, based on these four things, what was happening in the brain to determine what was happening in these people's physical bodies. Could it be that they changed their mind and by changing their mind, it had a physiological effect in their body? Now, some of these people weren't vegetarians. They didn't do crystals. They didn't fast. They didn't do any alternative therapies. All they did was they changed their mind. And by changing their mind, it produced some measurable results in their life. 
So I began this process of understanding how the brain makes new circuits and makes new connections.